Hello everyone, welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction. Guys, today we are getting back to Dimash. I picked up a lot of deers during the last Dimash video, which I did a couple months ago, and I've been promising more Dimash coverage, so here we are. Today we're going to be looking at Ogni Pietra, or Olimpico, I suppose. Um, I guess it goes by two names, I don't really know how that works, but we're about to dive in. I hear this is a good one to listen to, to really hear his operatic training come through. As I've talked about in the last video, he's sensational at so many different styles of singing. Um, but this one apparently is more operatic than, say, some of his other ones. So I'll be listening for that, of course. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe this video. Help it get up in that algorithm. Get that viewership up. Help my channel grow. And if you really like what I'm doing, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Links are in the description below. Guys, without further ado, let's check out Dimash's Olimpico. This is a first time viewing. I have not, I have intentionally not watched basically any Dimash so that I can do these videos first time. Um, let's dive in, let's see what happens. Excellent. So here we start. Yes, totally can confirm. This is much more operatic. Now there were moments in Stranger where he did kind of full on operatic singing. This one's he's really staying inside that technique. And it sounds quite good. I mean, so so there's there's been these comments that come up that um, are like, oh, but, but Dimash is a real opera singer. You know, he was offered a position at, at this opera house. And the only reason I make the distinction between Dimash and people who who I call real opera singers are be are just because Dimash doesn't perform full operatic roles in opera houses. He chose to go a different route with his career, and he's doing such an excellent job. And I think bringing an operatic sound into the mainstream, which is so great, and he really does. He really is a great example of that. Um, really, probably the best example I can think of of someone who is not singing legit opera in opera houses all over the world, like making a career in just opera. Um, like you compare him to uh, like Andrea Bocelli or Josh Groban. Dimash is a much better singer. He is just simply, and I, and I, I really like Josh Groban. Um, Andrea Bocelli, I've kind of always been, you know, on the, on the fence about, um, to be honest, but Dimash, Dimash is a really skilled singer. So it is cool to hear him tap into these, into these operatic skills he's using. Um, truthfully, his timbre, you know, he's got this crazy high range, which we hear, and I'm sure we'll hear later in the song. His timbre when singing, I mean, it does sound very, like, baritone to high baritone. You know, when he first opens his mouth in this song, I wouldn't guess super high tenor, which we know he goes into, the, into high tenor range and even high soprano range. So it's just interesting to hear his voice um, sound, uh, you know, darker, warmer, rounder than you're, than you're used to hearing with someone who has such a crazy high range. So it's really good. It's a really nice start. Um, you, you can tell a little bit as he descends into the bottom of his range, he loses a bit of that, that really strong vocal fold closure, which is what happens when, when singers just get a little beyond their comfort zone, especially on the lower end, it gets a little breathy. Now, of course, this doesn't happen when he goes up. And when he goes up, the vocal folds stay right together. It's a super pure, powerful sound. But you can tell a little bit towards the bottom here that it takes, he has to, he has to use a little bit more effort to kind of push out those low notes. Um, let's go back and just listen to that again. Um, this is really great so far. And I, of course, Dimash, I love the, the showmanship that Dimash puts on, the incredible production value, the, I mean, he's, he's up there, you know, in the moment performing, being an artist. And it's very showy and it's very, it's very exciting. And I think 
there's a reason he's selling out these huge venues, huge venues, because not only is he a great singer, he's a great performer. So let's run this back to when he first starts singing, about 30 seconds. See that on, on that Aventata? It sounds darker than I would expect. Uh, than I would expect to hear a high tenor voice. So it's really interesting. So now that makes me think about when when does he start mixing as he goes up? Like where does his full chest range truly end? Because it's it's lower than you would expect hearing how he starts here. <laughs> Siamo, si, it, siamo, siamo. Now, you can tell those, there's, there's moments of straight tone amidst, I'm getting into it, guys. I'm warning you. You told me to think about this operatically. I'm going to get in the weeds with it a little bit. So what you hear with the mosh is that there's often, for the shorter notes and, and the lower notes, they straight tone. And then when he has a little bit more time, that's when it starts spin, spinning again. With, with full bel canto singing in opera, you want each note to have vibrato. You really want to keep vibrato going completely through every note and between the notes. So there's always this free-flowing sound come out, coming out of your voice. Now the, th now, the thing that's hard to judge is if Dimash can do that and doesn't because the style isn't precisely opera. It's, it's his own thing that he's created, really. Um, or... Or does he, or does he not know how to do that, uh, or ha like master that part of the classical technique where it's really, it's completely free the whole time. There's never, there's, if you can avoid it, or unless it's a, a stylistic choice, there's basically never full straight tone. So that's just interesting. So pay attention as he, as he hits this, the really short notes. They're usually straight tone, and when the notes are just a, a tiny bit longer, he lets that vibrato come through. <laughs> Oh, oh, what's the word of the pitches there? So he's straight toning that whole thing. Whereas in you know full on bel canto singing, it would be it would, it would there be vi there be vibrato going through that whole section, even on the that passage that phrase, even on the short notes. Yeah. So these I'm pausing a lot. So sorry about that. Um, so you can tell these that the, there's this pattern that goes da 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 da, and that's all straight toned. Ba, 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 ba. And then he then he lets the, then he lets the note spin when that passage resolves, when that phrase resolves. And he does that this whole time for each one of those little movements. That was nice. That was that was a good showcase. Again, it's it's it is remarkable the the color of his sound. <laughs> and I'd be interested to see. I don't know if he's if that is his natural sound when using classical technique, or if he is intentionally slightly dark darkening it. That is <clears throat> what happens when most people sing opera. Um, that's like a habit every opera singer has to remove is over darkening the sound to make it sound warmer and bigger. Really, if you make a sound. If you over darken a sound, it sounds bigger in your own head because you're blocking more sound energy. So to you, it sounds like this big, like powerful, bassy, woofy sound, even if you're a higher voice. But what it does is actually muffles the sound and it cuts off the higher harmonics. So if you're singing live in an opera house, 
you straight up won't be heard against an orchestra if you're blocking those high harmonics because that's what cuts through the orchestra. That's that's what gets to the back of the opera house, not the low stuff. So I don't know. It's 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 hard to tell if that is truly his natural sound or if he's over darkening a little bit. It still sounds fantastic. It has it's a very warm, pleasant color. Timbre is the term to his voice, and I like it. And I think it works, especially. And I'd be interested to see if he if he knows he can maybe get away with a darker sound while he's amplified, but if he were singing with no microphone, if he would brighten it up to make sure it has that cut. Um, so, you know, the, the, I just need to sit down. I just need to sit down with Dimash and have a chat. I would love, I would love to just chat with him about classical technique and what he does in his thought process and his training and, and vocal exercises. That would be a dream come true. So may, may, maybe when the channel gets a lot bigger, we can, we can chat about it. Nice, nice. Mm. So that's a high C, I believe. <laughs> this one up here. C5. Beautiful. Keeps it full. Keeps it spinning. You know, you can tell he's not pushing it. He's not pushing it to get up there. I mean, he's got miles above that to go. But I can't wait. You can already tell he's going there. Um, so really nice. Free-flowing high C. Now, I'd be interested to know, is he doing that full chest? Is he doing that in some kind of mix? It's hard to say when volume is not really a factor in this kind of performance because, I mean, they're not, they're not tuning him or anything. Like, he sings very well in tune on his own. But what happens in this kind of performance is the sound goes into the amplifier or into the microphone, gets processed, compressed, so that even when he is singing really quietly, it's still, it's still going to fill this huge venue he's singing in. You know, so so that that would be a huge difference just to hear him do this live and hear the difference in volume, and also that hearing the difference in volume is another giveaway for what kind of technique someone's using. Mixed voice singing high and mixed singing a high C in mixed voice will not be as loud as if you're singing a high C fully connected to chest voice. I mean, that's a really big, powerful sound. I've heard really great tenors do it in person. And it's, it is remarkable how much louder it gets just in the very top part of their voice if they stay fully connected. Again, someone, someone give me an interview. I want to, I want to, I want to talk with this guy. <laughs> it's fantastic. And also I just love, I love how epic so much of his music is from what I've heard. Like this is just like, I'm just waiting for some of these tracks to find their way into like an epic film score because it's i mean it's it's right it's like right in that wheelhouse so I'd, I'd be surprised if that hasn't happened already and i'd be very surprised if it doesn't ever happen because it's it's like perfect for that So he a, truly like just one of the most impressive head voices on the planet. No question. Absolutely insane. And so much control up there. Now, again, he's using this kind of straight tone, the short notes, let the long notes spin thing. And again, I just I just want to know if that's all stylistic or if that's that's part of that's part of the bel canto training. Um, left to be desired. So it's it's just it's hard to say and, and he does it so consistently. Again, it'd be it'd be one thing, for instance, if it was like one phrase he's spinning everything perfectly through Bel Canto technique and the next phrase he's doing it he's doing it um straight tone, straight tone, straight tone, then spin. So it's just it's just hard to say if it's all intentional or if it's if it's just uh his his the development in his technique at this moment. And I know he still practices and trains, and so I think it's going to be really cool to see how he develops going forward. 
Um, but the main highlight from this section is, of course, just showing this beautiful, bright, flowing, clean, accurate, stunning head voice that you just, it's so rare to hear someone sing like this. So you could tell he does this with his songs. It kind of, he starts low in his chest range, then moves up, 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 up until it gets just like in the stratosphere. So I'm going to wait to plunk out notes until we get a little bit higher. I can only assume. Um, it's awesome. I love it. He's so good. It's going to be so hard not to just listen to all his stuff. I'm already having to resist. So there, it sounds like he's actually a little bit more comfortable using full vibrato all the time in his head voice rather than his chest voice, which is interesting. So maybe he's even more, I mean, who's to say he's not based on how good it sounds, more comfortable singing way up high than he is even in his normal chest range. Um, because there were definitely some of those passages there where he was introducing a little bit more vibrato on those short notes, as well as the sustained pitch at the end of each one of those phrases. So worth, worth noting and paying attention to. I can't see his tongue. I want to see what his tongue is doing, because the tongue is a big indicator of if someone is over darkening the sound or not. But the, the microphone keeps, keeps, I want to see your tongue, Dimash. <laughs> Let me see your tongue. <laughs> the microphone keeps blocking, so I can't tell. I can't tell what's going on in there. Can I see it? Ooh, I don't know if I can see it. It's too small. I can't say for sure, but it does look like his tongue is pulled back. Um, pulled back some to create that the little bit more of a darker, warmer sound. Again, something you can totally get away with when you're using a microphone like this. So I'd be interested if that's an adjustment he makes intentionally for these microphone performances in these huge uh, amphitheaters, stadiums, whatever, as opposed to, you know, if he were performing a recital live with no microphone, if he would brighten up that sound to give it more cut. So... I don't know, but it does look right here. If you look really closely, you won't be able to see on the little thumbnail. But if you go to the original video, I think this moment, two minutes and 49 seconds, you can see that his tongue is pulling back some, which is blocking some pharyngeal space, creating a little bit of an over darkened color to the sound. <laughs> Soprano high C, fully wide open, fully free, full vibrato. I mean, it's like, that's like where, I mean, that's just outrageous. It's almost like he's most comfortable singing in high soprano range. Incredible. Let's listen to that again. Just that, that last crazy high C. D6, D6. Look at this like squid game looking guy in the background with this outfit. <laughs>
it's so good. It's such a good production. I love I love the dancers on stage who are wearing all black except for these lights. Um, just a super cool effect. Again, yeah, I uh, yeah, someone actually on the first Dimash, on my first Dimash video, commented. So whoever this, I can't remember the name of the user commented. It was they, they, they had the original idea that Dimash is bringing a true operatic sound into the pop culture, and I totally agree. This is like so epic and so accessible, and it's really showing people what you know. At least aspects of this are real operatic singing. Right. So maybe maybe not the whole package. You know, I've talked a bit today about, you know, true full on Bercanto singing versus what Dimash does. Um, but a lot of it and like an operatic sound, like, you know, he, you know, the dark and powerful like singing, operatic singing. So it's really cool. And I'm so glad that he's getting so much attention because I, I really do think it will be a good thing for the opera world, especially if Dimash goes on to. And apparently he's done this already a, a bit. And I need to listen to that at some point. He's he has sung with people doing opera as a career, um, and I and I think that's so good. And more collaborations like that are exactly what the opera world needs to get more popularity. That I really think it deserves. It's such a cool, crazy, challenging, powerful, amazing, all encompassing art form. And big shouts to Dimash for for shining some spotlight on it. Much much love. Six. E mother effing six. Crazy. Crazy. That's almost as high as the Queen of the Night aria goes, which is notoriously one of the highest soprano arias. Goes to it. Am I even the right? Goes up to an F6. So he was just, just below that. Um, at the end, it's really hard to hear when it gets up that high. I think it sounded. It sounded like that E6 was pushing just beyond kind of his wheelhouse. So like the C6, the high C, he floated earlier, super easy. The, the E6, and maybe this is just an isolated incident, it did lose, it was kind of wavering in and out of straight tone and vibrato, which, which kind of demonstrates uh, just a, a little bit less control there than, than Dimash had just a, a major third lower to that soprano high C. Um, but either way, I mean, the fact that he can get a full sound and any vibrato at all up there and it's not just a squeal is more than remarkable. And I'm shocked and amazed. And this was so much fun and I, I really enjoyed, I mean, gosh, if you guys are still here listening to this, bless you for listening to me talk shop about operatic technique. Well, that was just, ooh, that was just the tip of the iceberg. That was just scratching the surface. We can go way deeper into technique and physiology and stuff so if you want to hear that please comment below and give me even more freedom to go into voice science and other other fun subjects like that but in short olimpico uh ogni pietra dimash and igor i guess Ig igor composed it uh sensational fun epic bringing that operatic sound of pop culture I, w I wish Dimash all the best, all the success in his career, and man, I would love to talk to him. I would love to talk to him about technique and his whole this whole genre he's basically creating. It's fantastic. Guys, thank you. Please like and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon. More Dimash will be on the way. Much love. Bye-bye.